In this lesson, we'll learn how the dope sheet has been improved for a more rich and context-sensitive experience. Okay, so what I've done in this lesson is brought in this robot fight. So I want you to go ahead and connect your viewer up to that original read note. If you select it and hit the one key, you can do that and then simply click play to watch those frames back. So you'll see that this sequence was originally created to have kind of a slow motion feel in it. But um, in this scenario, we're going to say that, um, you know, maybe your supervisor or your director or even just you have decided that you want that shot of the slow motion uh, part of it to be slowed down even further. And you can do that with a time warp node in Nuke. So in the past anytime you would use some sort of a retiming node you would really easily get lost um, in the dope sheet and even on your timeline because your keyframes are placed on their original absolute value and not at the re new retimed location so you can kind of see got a little bit of slow motion happening there but what if we want that part to be even slower? Okay, so I've already gone in and added that re time, uh, t this time warp. So if I look at the merge node and hit the one key, we can play this back and you'll definitely be able to tell that it's going much more slowly. Now, I also have this flare on my robot that I've gone ahead and tracked, but the problem is that it was tracked before the time warp was created and things like that happen all the time you may create an effect that uh, you then later retime that and your tracking data is off so I fix that by adding another time warp node between the flare and the merge but that doesn't um, completely solve all your problems if you're working in an older version of nuke because your dope sheet is still going to show the keyframes for anything we do with this flare in the wrong location. And now the dope sheet is much more sensitive to being able to just help us out with that. So what I want to do is have this part here where the flare is on his face at the beginning to really not be there. I want this part to be much lighter colored. Then once we zoom in, that's when the flare appears. Then we see this flare for this entire time that we're really slowly moving through this punch. And then once uh, the, it kind of detaches, that's because we're, we ran out of tracking data and we didn't want to try to, you know, have some because obviously it's a reflection off of his shiny head and he moves it. Um, so we want it to fade out at that point. We don't want it to just sit in the middle of the frame. So let's go ahead and open up that flare node by double clicking it and we'll set some keyframes on the brightness. So I'm looking at my merge. So I'm looking at the retimed version of my shot. So what I want to do is come in here and let's say just right about where that zoom finishes, we'll go ahead and set a keyframe for the brightness as it is. So I'll just right click that brightness property and choose set key. But you'll notice that the key was set on frame 17 because that's the absolute value of what this looks like uh, before the retime. So what's happening on your timeline is still a little bit off, but the dope sheet has been improved so that the keyframe appears in the right place. So if I look at my dope sheet, you'll see that my current time indicator is on frame eight and that's where those keyframes for the brightness appear in the dope sheet. You also see that we've got these two time warp uh, effects here, or excuse me, nodes that we've got uh, visible to view those keyframes on. So this one right here is the retime and then this time warp is the one that affects the flare. So you can see how I can open those up, toggle that and see the keyframes on the frames that uh, they're affecting rather than having to say, okay, you know, it's been offset this much so the keyframe would actually be on this frame. Really, really easy to get lost in previous versions. So 
let's actually X out of that time warp node and take a look at where we want to set our next keyframe. So I actually need to set a keyframe previous to this because I do want this to be reaching its full brightness uh, by this point right here on uh, frame eight. But if I move backwards to about right here, I that's where I kind of want it to start. So right here on frame four, we'll take that brightness all the way down to zero. And as you can see, that is shifted forward in time on the timeline, but it's in the proper place on the dope sheet. Okay. Now I'm going to scrub forward further and it looks like right about there is where we really start to lose it pretty much completely. So about this point, we need that to turn off. So we can set another keyframe by turning that down to zero. And again, you'll see keyframe is here on frame 32, but in our dope sheet, it's around frame 80. Um, and then we'll say we wanted to start fading out probably right here around frame 70 so we can turn that back up. It was around 0.44 for that brightness. Okay, so you can see that that has been added. And if I want to move this forward, I can do it in the dope sheet and it will move on my timeline. It just won't be in conjunction with where the current time indicator is on the timeline only in the dope sheet. Okay, so um, really, really helpful retiming uh, options here. And also just having the dope sheet have these layers is amazing. That in and of itself gives you so much more context to the keyframes that you're looking at. Um, okay, so another really interesting thing about the change in the dope sheet is that let's take a look at my node graph for a moment. And let's say um, that I'm actually viewing this flare node before the time warp. So if I take my viewer and I hook it up to the flare, and I come back over here into the dope sheet, you'll notice those keyframes have moved. If we come back over here to the node graph and I hook it back up to the merge dope sheet again, keyframes are back to where they were. So that is happening because the dope sheet now contextually recognizes where you are in your node graph. And if you're looking at this flare before the time warp, you probably want to see your keyframes in the context of the pre time warp scenario. So that is extremely helpful. And you'll notice that the dope sheet keyframes actually match up with those absolute values there on the timeline. So this is what that looked like before it was time warped. Then once we go back into the node graph, and we view um, post time warp, you can see that those have moved and it's just a really, really valuable workflow. Using the dope sheet previously, very, very difficult and easy to get lost. Now it's just cake. So stick around and in the next lesson, we're going to learn about a totally new feature in Nuke 8.